Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know, I make content relating to my active fentanyl addiction and also on my experience working in a prison as well as my experience being with somebody who was incarcerated. If that's the sort of thing that interests you then please do subscribe. This is going to be a video relating to working in prison. Obviously I worked in the healthcare sector so I kind of just wanted to discuss the things that are available to prisoners in the UK and obviously specifically in the prison that I worked in. As I can't speak for all prisons in the UK and certainly not prisons worldwide, I had no idea what would be available to prisoners. I had absolutely no idea. So I thought this might be quite interesting for people who might have no idea like myself. So I, as I've said before, and was a healthcare assistant. So I supported the nursing staff, whether that be to emergencies, um, appointments, medication, whatever kind of was required of the nursing staff, I would support with that. Obviously there was, limited amount of things that I could do compared to the nurses but I was just there as a kind of support and the plan was eventually for me to progress into a nursing role but obviously that didn't happen which for reasons which I will discuss at another time. So a lot of what's available on the outside is also available in prison. When you first arrive the prison that I worked in as I've mentioned before, was a high security Cat B prison. In the UK, we have local romance prisons where people go when they first arrested and then once they've been charged, they then go into one of the prisons like what I was working in. So they've already had kind of their initial assessments at other prisons. This isn't gonna be the first prison that they come to. Generally, they come here partway through their sentence, but either way they come in and even before they go into the proper prison, they have a quick assessment. The nurses ask them about the mental health, about the physical health, find out what medication they're on, just so they get a bit of an overview of them. They do read their notes as well, so there is an element of kind of knowing a bit, but in case anything's changed or anything's wrong, they have to kind of check that with them. They also do a similar kind of assessment if a prisoner has been restrained for any reason or they've been in a fight, the nurses will go on to the staff and kind of just do a bit of a bit of a check on them, make sure they're okay. Often, you know, they're really wired up and they're very angry, so they don't want to talk to the staff. But if they do, it's just a quick, are you okay? Is there anything you need? Are you cut? Are you bruised? Do you do you need any emergency assistance? Do you, you know, need to go out to hospital? Kind of a quick, quick check over. So it's a similar kind of assessment. And the nursing staff also support with moving around the prison. So if they were going to be moved it staff don't like to keep them in one place for too long so if they're if they're moving them from one side of the prison to another from one wing to another nursing staff will come along to ensure that everything is going as it should um however as we know not everybody was there for the right reasons so i can't speak for the nursing staff doing their job properly but when I went along with the nurses and watched prisoners get move cells or move wings, everything that I saw was as it should be and, and nothing, they weren't put under undue pressure or undue pain, etc. So I can only speak from my experience, but I know it didn't always happen like that. So obviously then they go into their cell and the way that it works is you fill out um, an application form for your appointment so you can take you know doctors nurses dentist physio i'll run through everything else in a bit more detail but you tick which one you want you write out your concern um, and then i would go around and collect that file for them to go in for an appointment and then send it back and say you know you'll be in touch and then they'll get a little slip which is a movement slip which allows them to move off the wing because you're not just allowed to move around for no reason it's a prison it's a murderous prison they're not just allowed to walk around wherever they like for no reason they have to have um, a reason you know whether it be education whether it be exercise whether it be work or whether it be healthcare. so they would have a slip to say their name and the time of their appointment and there's only certain times that they allow for movements so they would say with the radio 10 o'clock moves or whatever and that would be for 15 minutes they would be allowed to move and then they would um, seize movements 
and if they weren't in place you know they would miss their appointment or whatever it was so they would get that slip that would obviously entitle them to come up to healthcare i worked on the desk so i checked them in and i would let whoever it was know whatever the appointment they were here for i'd let them know so and so see if their appointment um and they would call them through that was also in the same place that we did medication so medication would work in a kind of similar way we had medication first thing in the morning lunchtime afternoon and then there would be a later one which the nighttime nurse would do and in terms of medication you can get everything that you would get on the outside you can get that on the inside as well so that is exactly the same as far as i'm aware there was nothing that they they weren't allowed to have things were obviously more difficult and there were certain things that they didn't want them necessarily to be on such as opiates amphetamine medication which is for adhd a lot of the time that is um used not how it should be so there were ways in which we got around that um opening up the capsules and putting it in water so that they can't then keep the capsule in their mouth and you know sell it or give it to somebody else there were ways that we got around making sure people had swallowed it but it's always going to happen in terms of what's available for appointments when you've not long been in they would be checked for certain diseases um, which i was trained to do so it would be a case of just pricking the finger and putting little dots of blood onto a little card and sent off and that would just make sure that they were clear of of certain diseases just helps keep you know the prison safe and you know as much as we don't want it to happen we know that there's going to be needles we know that there's going to be tattooing we know that there's going to be things that shouldn't happen you know it's going to be sex so it's it's a case of just trying to keep people as safe as possible they don't have to do it most of them love coming down to healthcare it's like a little holiday for them so yeah they'll come down you know it doesn't hurt they'll happily sit there something that i was also um in training for was blood tests obviously people can have blood tests for literally anything so we do blood tests quite often i think we did about three or four clinics a week we do general fit tests for the older people just making sure that their health's in order making sure that they don't require any extra support you know checking weight height all that sort of thing and then obviously there's nurses appointments which tend to be more of your emergency appointments or maybe not necessarily emergency but the doctor does as on the outside gets booked up really really quickly the doctors have maybe six appointments a day i think something like that or eight appointments a day so not very many um, for 800 prisoners so a lot of the time the nurses would be the first port of call especially if it was something like a wound the nurses could treat the wound if it was an ecg i could do an ecg as well so things anything that could keep the doctor's appointments free would be great but yeah the nurses could do a lot of things there was a certain prisoner who had used heroin prolifically for a very 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 long time to the point where there were whole chunks of his legs missing it it was it was awful the first time you see it it is shocking it like i could not believe it and the smell the smell was bad like not a lot faces me but the first time you smell that my god it's like rotting flesh it's um horrid and he would come up daily to have his wounds checked and the doctor would check them every now and again but generally the nurses would keep on top of that because they, they knew what to do as you know delia i'd support with that as well so yeah the nurses would do a lot and they would do appointments on weekends as well generally for emergencies whereas everything else is only during the week it would only be emergency appointments at the weekend but the nurses were there should anyone need anything you know self-harm wounds emergency ecgs or and obviously you know the, the big emergencies like overdoses people trying to take their own life stabbings things like that so and um, the nurses would be there all the time and then of course we've got doctor appointments so standard doctor's appointments like you would get on the outside with your gp very very similar in that they would do all the things that a gp would do like i say they've normally been screened by a nurse first and the nurse would then refer them if they didn't feel like they could do it obviously the nurses bar one nurse who was an advanced nurse practitioner the nurses can't prescribe so if it was a medication related thing it would have to go to the doctor or the psychiatrist however the psychiatrist wasn't in very often which the prisoners would moan about but 
I'll be honest, they got to see him a lot quicker than I've been to see a psychiatrist and I know other people to see a psychiatrist on the outside. So I, to be honest, I think it's quite realistic and in fact better than being on the outside sometimes. I've had to wait for a doctor's appointment for, you know, over a month before and they would usually get in like two weeks was the max. It's usually before then. So they use the minor ballot, but actually I, I think it's it's better than it probably is on the outside, to be honest. I'm not trying to say that they have it good or, or anything like that. I'm just trying to talk in comparisons. It sounds like, you know, they have to wait a long time, but when you compare it to the outside, actually you know, we have to wait a lot longer a lot of the time. Obviously we have the option to go private and we have the option to go through different channels, but they do have access to a lot of the things a lot sooner in there. And I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm not saying that's wrong. I do think that's right, but it. I just want it to kind of weigh up and, and for you guys to understand exactly how it kind of works in there. Alongside that, they also have dentist appointments. They don't do emergency dentist appointments. Um, that you know the dentist kind of work Monday to Friday, nine till about four or five. But you know the dentists are there and they will get them in as soon as possible. And they do most treatments. They're not going to do things like whitening, veneers, etc. But anything cosmetic they won't do. But they will do you know your standard fillings, crowns, root canals, all that sort of thing. There's then also a physio that used to come in. I think he'd come in once a week. And again, he, he did have a fairly long waiting list, but they would get to see him and he could see people for all the standard kind of issues that somebody might have in which regards they might need a physio for. They did need to be referred, I think, from the doctor, potentially from a nurse as well. But, you know, they got, they got to see a physio. Granted, he might only see them probably once every six weeks. They then would also have specialists coming in. So specialists like a liver nurse for the ones that had hep C, they would come in. They were specialists for anything that was required really. HIV, anything that they feel couldn't be managed with the stuff that they had, they would get other stuff to come in and be able to help with that. And I think back when they were smoking they also offered like smoking sessions with the pharmacist who was trained so there was essentially anything that's offered on the outside they were offered on the inside again going back to that advanced nurse practitioner she was i mean she was brilliant to be honest she she was great but she would do specific like asthma i think epilepsy high blood pressure all those kind of things she would she would manage them solely they had a really good system i felt i felt like it ran really smoothly they knew exactly who you need to see when i was booking appointments i knew exactly this specialist is for this condition or this for this condition or i would go and say oh do you know can the nurses deal with this is this a doctor's thing or whatever it might be the system actually worked really really well i would say everything has its faults and you know there were many issues with the way that things worked in terms of services that were offered. I don't think things were taken as seriously as they probably should have been a lot of the time, especially when it comes to mental health. There were a lot of warning signs of prisoners that were taken seriously, but in terms of prisoners getting seen, especially by more of the primary healthcare, which is, you know, your physical health, I think things ran pretty well. There's obviously, as I said, things that would be changed, but I, th I think it I think it ran well I actually when I worked there was attending sessions to try and improve the service and see what could be done I did a thing where I went on to the wings and whatever month we were raising awareness for I would do a board just try and help open up communication and allow for the prisoners to feel a little bit more like they could probably talk to us and communicate with us which i thought was really important doing things asking questions of how they felt like things could be improved doing as much as i could to help the service improve and run better because there's always things that could be done held monthly meetings with somebody from each wing so that they could discuss how they felt things could improve i did as much as i could do while i was there and i attended these sessions externally which told us you know how we could improve things and 
I really enjoyed that and I wish that that could have continued but I know when I left there was no way that was continuing let's be honest it was um yeah it was not gonna happen because <laughs> I genuinely don't think people cared the way that I did which is really sad when it's health care people are supposed to care but apparently they don't so it's to be expected as, as sad as it is but I do think in comparisons in comparison to other prisons that it probably did run well and I'd be interested to hear the differences between other prisons especially I know in America it's a lot lot worse a lot worse it's still difficult to get sent out to an external hospital here but appointments happened all the time every day there was probably two two prisoners that would go out to hospital and obviously in emergency circumstances they would go out if it was a real emergency but you know for checkups and things like that they did happen quite regularly as well not as readily available I would presume as being on the outside but they definitely did happen and I know that that's very very different in America and probably all around the world so that is something I was really pleased about and I was really glad that that did happen. As I say, really interested to know if you guys want to comment and let me know the differences in the prisons you either in and you worked in or you know about. I'd really like to hear about that and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!